this is more important than a stent. This is more important than a bypass surgeon. This will wow. save them from it. And every patient goes home with a 29 cent fork. And I feel it's got plasticizers and endocrine disruptors, so I have to tell them, don't use it. Just take it to your refrigerator because uh, it'll change your life. And then that is, just as Carolyn showed you, that is a typical exit for a patient from my office who hasn't yet gotten my shit. Forks over knives, China study, Dean Ornish's spectrum, 21 day kickstart is routinely what I tell them to go to. In fact, my email, if anybody, anywhere, my banker, my lawyer gets an email, it has a link to the vegetarian starter kit that PCRM puts out that's right there under clinical professor of medicine. Boom. I mean, I want to proselytize as much as I can with high quality materials I don't have to spend time on. So it's all there and very simple. I do have three partners, as you can see. They're wonderful. They like some of what I do. They give me grief for some of what I do because sometimes I'm pushing them up, they just don't like that their name is associated with it. Uh, I've had the pleasure, and you can't do this easily, and I didn't do this, but I've been on a billboard in Detroit for four years. Um, I-75, 150,000 cars a day, you see this picture, and maybe a mile later see John Sally on a similar billboard, and God bless our local vegetarian society, they've gotten some funding for this. So it's a great joy for me to look over one of the major medical centers that has a Wendy's in the lobby and kind of like the eyeglasses of uh, Greg Gatsby to at least look down on a little moral conscience. And I don't know, it's hard to measure what this does, but it does something and uh, you know, there's about three, four, five of them around Detroit at times uh, giving a message. So if you have a local vegetarian society, this is vegmichigan.org and get some funny, we generally they buy these billboards at deep discount, Christmas time, forget it, because all the jewelers, of course, have bought them for the big mm. thing. Um, I'm out there all the time. If you want me to speak at a flower shop, I speak at a flower shop at a gas station, I'll speak at bookstores, I'll speak to 15 people, I'll speak hopefully to 1,000 people at our large vegetarian annual thing. But I don't really care, I mean, I'm happy to reach it if it gets recorded and I can post it or social media it out, all the better. But um, the only example, most recently, the bottom middle one was my hospital system, a very large hospital system in Detroit, um, is trying hard to do a little better and they uh, asked me to record some videos of like a healthy tour of the cafeterias. Uh, which was a very short video, it was about two minutes. <laughs> so many stories, so many stories about hospital food that just gets me incensed because you know, there's no worse representation of the medical community in America than the worst food is inside the hospital system. Anyways, but once in a while, once in a while we can find some nuggets and it's slowly changing. I'll give you one anecdote. I'm in an 1,100-bed hospital that's at times been ranked in the top 10 in America in cardiology. There are no friars in the cafeteria. A great victory. There are friars in the doctor's dining room because the doctor's lying louder than the guests that they must have fried chicken and fried nuggets. They can't possibly have baked chicken and baked nuggets. So I found that out recently and I'm on a war path to uh, do that. But sticking on the whole medical administration, it's kind of been tough. So I, as I said, you can write. I can write, there's places to write. I kind of fell into a popular wellness website called mindbodygreen.com. I don't own it, I make not a nickel on it, but I've gotten to the point of writing a blog a week, sometimes shared a thousand times, sometimes shared 55,000 times and read by five to 10 million people. And they've either got a wellness or a plant-based orientation and many of you could submit stuff to places like this and other blog sites. This is by no means unique. Um, and just seek some out because you have talents and you have special knowledge. And there is, as we've seen, there's meaning so much of the other side that is distorting data. I mean, I write about, uh, well, the, how food you eat, you eat changes your genes is directly from a publication in March in Circulation Medical Journal. Very kind of, I have to dumb down the science so I understand it, then I can explain it to other people. But I mean, it's straight from the science, unlike. Uh, Butter is back, Time magazine. So in the one about Finland, these, if you don't know about Finland, look up the study, but when Finland as a country decided to reduce animal saturated fat, coronary disease fell by 85% by eliminating butter and switching to skim milk and adding some vegetables, like a vegetable a day, an 85% drop in North Karelia. 
been that. So the opportunity to write some of the stuff for me, and then of course to share with my patients and let them just do self-study. Um, I do uh, try and uh, you know share some other books. If you haven't seen this book, Rethink Food, both Dr. Davis to my left and uh, I wrote a chapter for this book, more than 100 medical professionals talking about plant-based nutrition. It just came out earlier this year. It's quite a nice reference in terms of making an impact with somebody all over this world. There are people that believe plant-based nutrition is important. I love uh, Keep It Simple, Keep It Whole. The two docs were featured in Forks Over Knives because it's literally about 100 pages and very uh, persuasive and specific about how to get enough omega-3 through plant-based diets and such. Just, you know, and of course, PCRM has such depth. I'll, if you're taking notes, I'll give you one other. I write, I ask a lot of patients to go to adapt.org, which is A-D-A-P-T-T.org. Our local animal rights activist, Gary Urosky, when I say local, it lives in suburban Michigan, has a website that is increasingly a wealth of how to transition to vegan uh, style, not vegan style, complete vegan lifestyle, food, clothing, and every other aspect. And it's really been, because it starts with his new 45 minute uh, in your face screaming video about why uh, killing animals for food is the Holocaust that we must avoid. So it's a great site if you've never seen it. Um, and he takes no money from nobody, he's just another vegan badass who's giving me a lot of uh, energy. Um, I'm silly, so there on, the, uh, on our right is the Food Babe. I don't know if you know foodbabe.com, I love her. She's an internet sensation, and she's good looking, and she writes about uh, Subway bread having plasticizers in it and got, you know, got a chain, so I do hokey stuff and put us together just hoping somebody thinks I'm a 35-year-old bikini clad gal and sodas and all the rest. But the thing is, if you're into social media and tweeting and stuff, people like to see that you're not the angry vegan. Um, I had the opportunity about five weeks ago to be on a panel in Arizona with Mark Hyman, Blood Sugar Solution, a wonderful guy who's giving some very bad food advice. And, and Frank Lippman, who's in New York and the integrative doctor, the stars, cash practice, who gives even worse food, who's like 80% uh, fat diets. And I, you know, I won the day, and I was very nervous about this, by being the friendly vegan, not the angry vegan. In fact, Frank Lippman came at me like, uh, the, the militia after the green guy, and it played very badly on uh, uh, some videos that have been played over and over all around the world. So, uh, you know, I'm persistent, but I'm also not going to beat you with my broccoli spears and make you cry. But these are all <laughs> part of the strategy to use whatever I can to uh, get the word out. Social media, every other aspect. And I mean, I'm 55 years old, and I did not know how to tweet until a year ago. I got my 20 year old daughter in the back, and I had to give you some advice. and. You know, I watch people like Dr. Davis to my left who is really good with social media and I just can't take my shirt off and look as good as he does when he takes his shirt off. And every other aspect, I'm trying to give up with him. But, uh, it really, you know, it's a powerful thing, and particularly if we're going to reach the young people, the daughter's age of millennials. I have friends in marketing say, if you're not reaching people 20 to 35, you're not talking to the future. And you've got to be a little funky, a little hip. David Katz has done this with some funky videos on nutrition. and. You know, more and more of that, and it's it's an important issue. We've got to have a little fun with it. And then I, I don't know if I have one or two more slides, but I just have I, I, I didn't know about websites. I had somebody make one. It does cost a few bucks, um, and I just dump everything on there because that way I can have my patients. I can spend now 15 hours, 20 hours watching. Uh, and I've been very lucky to take PCRM stuff and have permission to put it on there. I kind of like the Daniel plan. I like it for its social support. Christian based uh, non vegan program in Saddleback Church, but I like a lot of their teaching materials about cleaning out your pantry and got permission to dump some of that stuff. So people can do it. And I, you know, you all know you can put tons of stuff for people if they don't want it, they're not going to do it. So I'm not going to reach every one of my patients, and I'm in a blue car area. And if I can get them to eat an apple a day or just think about, you know, trying a bean burger once in a while, I have pretty simple goals with a lot of them. But uh, if they'll keep studying, they make changes and have had some spectacular uh, people. So the last thing, and I think uh, at least last thing I'll talk about, is about, this has been by far the most fun thing I've done in my practice and the most effective, is a, a man called me six months ago and said, I live in the Detroit community, I'm not your patient, I was scheduled to have bypass a year ago at the Cleveland Clinic, I was in the hospital waiting, and I met Dr. Esselstyn and it changed my life, 
And I said, damn, I'll change my diet to avoid bypass. And he left the Cleveland Clinic, and he's now 70 pounds lighter, 100 milligrams per deciliter, cholesterol lower, no drugs, plays tennis two hours a day, does 12 minutes on a stress test without any signs of problems. Very wonderful guy. Now let's make a patient support group. I can't go out to dinner. I can't eat with my family. It's just a lonely thing. I hear this from a lot of patients. So I said, sure. We got a little article in the newspaper, and we were given permission in my hospital to use a small conference room, and we thought 15 people would show up, and 135 people show up, showed up in February. Sorry, I, it was like out the doors, crazy. And I gave a little talk, and he gave a little pony dance. Six months later, I check a website, I don't know if it shows there, maybe it's on the next slide, called plantbasednutritionsupportgroup.org. We have 10 events a month, all free, no funding. We have restaurants that now will cook Barnard, Ornish, Esselstyn diets, because we can bring 50 people at $18 a plate, and they fill up their restaurant on Tuesday night, and they are hog wild happy for vegans. Uh, we have walking clubs, we have lectures, we got the man rip coming and the man Dr. Caldwell coming in the next few months because they paid attention to what we're doing. And of course, social media I share all over. It's been a ton of fun. This nice woman's going to come and talk about being the Indians and make us all cry with that video yesterday. Um, and that would be the end of my slide set, I believe. So thank you very much.